Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, National Museum for Archaeology, History and Art. Uh, this evening we have uh, three very special guests, which I will introduce to you later on. It's the last uh, event of our uh, program of activities uh, connected to the exhibition um, Erwin Olaf and Hans Obdebeek, inspired by Steichen, which started 15 December last year and will run until the 11th of June this year. And there's also the smaller exhibition that Hans and Erwin curated in the Elbildheim, uh, uh, behind the museum in the cabinet of Steichen, the artist view, which is connected to, the, um, to this exhibition. And uh, this evening, we will have a very special view on both artists and on the contemporary art markets in, in general, uh, taking this exhibition as a sort of venture point with uh, Els Wuits mm -hmm. from um, uh, Beaufort. Yes. Uh, which is a, a, a modern art festival in, in eight coastal cities. Ten, in, in fact. Uh, ten, in fact. Ten. Okay, ten coastal cities in the west of Flanders. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ron Mandos, who is the only gallerist I know uh, that has both Erwin, represents both Erwin Olaf and Hans Obdebeek, uh, based in Amsterdam. And um, um, I was happy to attend uh, in this, I think it was early December, uh, the exhibition of uh, aquarelle uh, paintings, uh, watercolor paintings by Hans Obdebeek in your gallery in Amsterdam. And uh, of course, you all, all know Alex Redding of Nosbaum Redding, or, um, a good neighbor and one of the premier uh, gallerists in the in Luxembourg with a very interesting and very uh, uh, good program of uh, both accomplished artists but also emerging artists as honest uh, too <coughs> by the way so we are looking forward to a very nice uh, exchange of ideas um, mainly in English sometimes mm -hmm. in French um, whatever is comfortable for our guests and uh, please feel free also to think of questions or to ask questions if you have them uh, at a certain point. Uh, Els will be in charge of the conversation. Uh, uh, so um, I'll give the microphone yes. uh, to pass to the two gentlemen to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, um, let's uh, enjoy a nice evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the invitation to... Uh, <laughs> And to be here for joining us at this talk, it will be uh, streamed live also. So sometimes maybe we will not tell secrets tonight, but uh, we will be as open as possible to share some thoughts. Let's say it like this. And uh, to introduce myself, maybe we talk about uh, who we are and uh, what we do. So myself, I am Els Wertz, is the most uh, not international name you can uh, think about uh, because no one can pronounce it or uh, you think about everything else or someone else but uh, <laughs> it's just like Elisabeth uh, it's uh, voila it's my name elsewhere and uh, for now I am connected in two positions in fact the main positions I'm doing because I'm a freelance curator mostly but I'm connected with uh, uh, the higher school of visual arts in uh, Brussels uh, called HISC it's like a postgraduate program where international artists can come to a residency to have a program, lectures, open studios next week. So if you're in Brussels, please feel free to join us at the open studios. But most of my time, in fact, is indeed Beaufort. And Beaufort is a triennial at the Belgian coastline with art in public space. And it's in 10 communities which means, as you know, when you do something in a public space, there is all, always something. It's not only the idea of a curator or an artist or everyone who has the dreams and uh, the bigger thoughts of what you want to do, but also a lot of stuff in, uh, in every moment of the process. Um, you know, uh, nature has uh, something to say, of course. The beaches, the wind, the sand but also on the dikes, every street is from different administrations. So we are in the phase of going around in 10 communities with um, 
many, many administrations and offices, which is fine too, because that gives always not only problems, but mostly solutions, and that's what we uh, are here for together also. But please, I uh, like to pass the mic to uh, Ron Mandos to introduce. <coughs> yeah, I'm Ron Mandos, born in Rotterdam, uh, started my career first as a uh, trump trumpeter, a musician, because there is not an education or study to how to become a gallerist. But uh, no, then I had uh, several flower shops in Rotterdam. I saw them and I had three years sabbatical. And then I, maybe you know about the Stendhal syndrome, because if you read a book or listen to music or going to see very beautiful art, you can really are so impressed that you almost cry of it. And that experience I had in the city of Madrid. And I saw all these billboards in the city. Uh, well, you have to go to the Reina Sofia Museum because there is something very special now. I'm talking about about 30 years ago. And I saw the Guernica from Picasso and I cried for half an hour. And I thought, well, somebody who only with paint give me an emotion like this, I have to do something uh, with it. So I started my uh, gallery, my own uh, home in Rotterdam. Uh, next year we are celebrating our 25th uh, anniversary and a uh, spacious uh, place on one of the canals in, uh, on the Prinsengracht in Amsterdam. So try to come to the Vermeer show because it is an amazing uh, in the Rijksmuseum almost 30 uh, paintings and I have for some people or a patron card who you can use so but I hope that we have a, a nice uh, conversation thank you Ron and we know each other since 20 years at least now I know much more since this moment as you told me how you became a gallerist with this spectacular moment in front of Guernica painting. Um, je vais continuer en français, je préfère. Hein. Donc, Ron, j'ai eu l'occasion de, de, de faire une bonne partie de, de la carrière, euh, de, du début de la carrière de galeriste euh, dans les années 2003, 2004, 2005. Uh, we met at FIAC, uh, at the de la Cour du Louvre. We met at least, I think. Um, so we are quite uh, the same generation. I, I started my gallery in 2001, you in 99, so it's uh, uh, quite the same generation. And as, as Ron, myself, I didn't do uh, some studies to get galleries. Anyway, there are no studies to be galleries, and this is such a, a way of feeling experiences. And I mean, uh, the experience for me was uh, more uh, like uh, being, uh, starting like being an artist, uh, working in two international areas who have been Paris from uh, 2000, uh, um, I mean, uh, 1990-1914 and then Düsseldorf 1950-1917 and afterwards coming back to Luxembourg. Casino opened just at that moment, so suddenly there was something international happening in Luxembourg, but it was still quite different, difficult situation for young artists. So after two, two three years, I, I give up being artist and I start uh, the gallery uh, together with uh, Veronique, my wife, uh, in uh, creating a company in 2000 and opening first show in January 2001. Um, since we uh, arrived here on Fish Market on 2006, I think, and we opened this corner space, a large space in 2017. Last year, or two years ago, even now, we opened a gallery in, in Brussels, in a good situated place next to Louise, where other galleries are around, Baronian, and the other side of Louise, we have uh, Tomplan, uh, Rodolphe Schanz, and Patina Royale. So, um, for me, it's a new, a new life starting somewhere, as, as we uh, get uh, uh, in a much more international environment. Belgium is uh, coming out from Luxembourg in international environment. Um, nevertheless, it's not yet Paris or London, but it Almost. has such <laughs> a beautiful energy, mm -hmm. and for sure it has a beautiful artistic scene, mm -hmm. which is maybe one of the strongest in Europe for the moment. Um, then, 
uh, other, uh, another activity are public projects. To one bigger one, which repeating every year, I, have a, 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 I created a fair in Luxembourg. Uh, in 2015, uh, starting with 20 galleries, now we have about 80 galleries and it starts to be a, a main uh, public event in Luxembourg in, in November. And another public um, project um, are, um, for example, this year, or, I mean last year, I did a sculpture project in Esch, European Capital of Culture, inviting 23, 24 artists, uh, uh, international stars like Tony Craig, Stefan Balkenhol, uh, Wim Delvoye, Porte Limitogo, uh, Erwin Wurm, big names, younger big names like uh, Katinka Bock, uh, um, Valentin Caron, but also a young Luxembourgish artist or uh, let's say mid-career, young to mid-career Luxembourgish artist, so making a beautiful mix between these international positions and uh, the a new Luxembourg generation. And I, I, I did also um, uh, some former, some big public project, and I think it will go on. It's, it's something really passionate to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Some project to our, and in total other scale than being with the gallery on the art fair. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, in fact, you relate also to the fact that as a gallery, you're not only uh, being a gallerist towards uh, the artist and towards your clients and the public, but I also understood from you both have a special interest in all, also in young talent and the development of, of uh, uh, the way they can uh, proceed in their uh, personal careers, but also looking around how the art world works, how they can present their work and so on. Uh, I understood that you have um, a Young Blood Foundation, and, uh, and also you have a Nussbaum Reading project. Can you tell something about this uh, project towards young artists? Sure. Um, well, when I started my gallery in uh, Amsterdam, it was a very spa is a spacious uh, uh, place. And in the summer, I now, last year, it was for the 15th time that I have my Best of Graduation, uh, graduation show. So we, with a team of uh, a curator and also the staff, we are visiting 11 art academies in the Netherlands. And there are about 500 uh, young people who are, who are graduate. And then we have this kind of selection. We make a selection where, uh, from 20 or 25 young artists. But we think, well, in five years, 10 years, there are still an artist because from the 500, uh, we had a little research and I think not 10% uh, stay an artist in five or 10 years. But that was, that was really a huge uh, success because nowadays our collectors, in comparing to 25 years ago, money is uh, a, a kind of important uh, issue, uh, become an uh, important issue and you, the older generation collectors who had really their heart on uh, mm -hmm. also supporting young artists, uh, that's, uh, they, that's really, uh, it is less at the moment. So we get this gap and you can imagine that if you are in Groningen or Maastricht and you are as a young boy or girl and you will select it uh, to have a, a gallery show on the one of the super canals in Amsterdam it is really a great success and then we have also collaboration with Museum Voorlinden. Museum Voorlinden uh, selects uh, our winner uh, my foundation supports an artwork and it will become in the permanent collection of the museum so that's a dream start yeah mm -hmm. and you um. <coughs> Yeah, helping, helping young artists was uh, becomes a, a real thematic for me at this moment of my career. Vous pouvez parler français aussi. Hein? Merci. Oui. Mais je dois dire que um, dans l'ADN de la galerie, um, um, le point de départ, c'est de commencer avec des, young, des, des jeunes artistes. En d'autres termes, j'ai fait uh, les études à, à Paris, et aussi bien à l'université qu'au Beaux-Arts. Après, j'étais à Düsseldorf et quand j'ai ouvert la galerie, j'ai ouvert avec les copains. C'est-à-dire, c'était les, les gens de, la, de ma génération, de, de, de l'année d'avant ou de l'année derrière moi, mais c'était vraiment la, la clique euh, autour euh, euh, 
de moi et ont développé ainsi une, une dynamique commune et à, à partir de cette dynamique on, on, grand, on faisait grandir notre, notre réseau euh, évidemment une fois que euh, après 15-20 ans on a un peu perdu euh, euh, le lien avec, euh, euh, avec le, le milieu de ceux qui sortent des écoles évidemment il faut trouver des, 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 des astuces des, des chemins des des nouvelles voies, comment on peut se situer sur ce secteur de, de la découverte ou de la promotion, ce qui est la même chose, puisque euh, on découvre automatiquement, on fait de la promotion et c'est un va-et-vient euh, et ça crée une dynamique autour d'une galerie. Mm -hmm. euh, ce, ce point est particulièrement euh, important euh, dans, 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 dans cette période actuelle euh, où, euh, comme disait Ron, euh, les anciens collectionneurs qui suivaient qui suivait sur des, 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 des décennies presque un artiste pour euh, former une collection autour de points forts et soutenir d'une manière aussi bien philosophique, idéologique euh, ou, euh, ou, ou par amitié une démarche, c'est devenu très rare. Donc, euh, euh, mais il faut quand même créer de l'élan, il faut mm -hmm. créer de la dynamique. Et comment on crée de la dynamique Mais justement, euh, en en, en, en faisant le travail de recherche qu'il faut, notre expérience 25 ans de, de galeriste, ça nous permet de, 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 de voir ce qui est, est l'air du temps, qui, qui, qui a l'énergie, qui, mm -hmm. qui, qui, qui sait s'articuler. C'est pas souvent dans une académie, on voit trois, trois, trois travaux exposés, on, on les aime bien. Mais au final, est-ce que, est que la, je nomme, le jeune homme ou la jeune femme, est-ce qu'ils ont l'énergie, la capacité de pouvoir euh, continuer sur cet élan Donc l'idée de les inviter sur des projets est, 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 est primordiale, mm -hmm. c'est-à-dire le fait de se confronter à leur démarche pendant euh, trois jours sur un montage, ça donne une toute autre optique de la personne que euh, d'aller choisir euh, sur un mur ou sur un catalogue mm -hmm. euh, des œuvres. Et c'est là où on voit euh, la, la capacité euh, structurelle, relationnelle, euh, euh, de réflexion, de, mi de mise en réseau euh, d'une personne. Et ce sont des, des facultés qui sont absolument primordiales euh, pour résister dans un milieu. Autrement, euh, on, perd, euh, on perd à un certain moment le lien avec, avec le, le milieu. On, on, on est isolé. On mm -hmm. perd la créativité, on perd l'élan, on perd l'énergie. Et c'est des facultés qui sont, euh, qui sont que... C'est du pur vécu. On mm -hmm. le vit par, par les initiatives qu'on prend. And you mean then um, the idea that they are in the scene, the art scene, of a, a point of view of a gallery? Or you mean the art scene in total? I think uh, this, uh, uh, les, les deux points uh, se, se rejoignent. Uh, rejoignent. Une, une galerie sérieuse et uh, fortement structurée dans une scène artistique. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 je pense que Ron ou, ou moi-même, uh, on, on, on est sur les scènes locales du Luxembourg ou de, uh, de Rotterdam, uh, uh, des, 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 des gens qu'on observe, mm -hmm. qu'on suit, le conseil ou mais aussi la méthode ou l'élan ou l'énergie, ça met de la concurrence, il mm -hmm. euh, y, y a plein de facteurs. Donc, en fait, on crée le, on crée le milieu. Euh, oui. Le milieu n'existe pas sans ces différents éléments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Et donc, euh, euh, il, il est, il est, il, je pense qu'il est totalement faux de voir euh, le milieu euh, euh, marchand comme un milieu différent. différent. Ce n'est pas le cas et je non. pense que ce qu'on ce qu a vu aussi euh, justement dans cette exposition actuelle euh, est que euh, c'est à travers les galeries respectivement leur lien avec des collectionneurs qu'un certain nombre d'artistes font d'abord mm -hmm. une carrière de 10-15 ans avant d'être repris sur un niveau institutionnel, mm -hmm. par exemple. Oui, je comprends aussi que les liens avec les institutions et les musées et aussi les espaces d'art et des projets publics sont très connectés, comme vous l'avez dit. Le like monde de l'art est très connecté. Et j'ai aussi lu que Steichen n'a jamais cessé d'être un réseau tireless de tireless networker and also a promoter of new talent. So, in fact, here we make this link with uh, the exhibition. 
But uh, of course, uh, this connection with the art world and every step on the road, um, the fact that you have these side projects gives you also an idea to, and also the artist give it an idea, how can you present your work and how can you help them? Can you feel that really in, the, in that moment, those three days that you are busy, or do you still feel that they have sometimes more time needed or, or energy needed that can come from you or your staff? You mean the, the young students? Yes. Well, we are in the month or five weeks that we are presenting them. We have uh, almost every week we invite a guest, mm -hmm. either sometimes a banker, sometimes a collector, of course. But also sometimes we explain that it is much better to also as a young artist to directly uh, work with contracts. Mm -hmm. Because in the art world, you know, and, and uh, we all know for a long time ago that there was not so many rules. And it's so uh, important also for an artist to, to get your money on time. And, mm -hmm. and then we really educate them in it. And uh, I think that's, that's quite important because on art academies, there are no lessons in, in these kinds of things, no, you know. No. Yeah. Not yet, in fact, yeah. 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 And also, like artists that are that do not went to um, academies, do you also feel the vibes like in off spaces or in uh, artist run spaces or? Uh yeah. Before I s I give the mic to uh, to Alex, of course, you know, every time you know how how do I select or with my team the the artists who I want to represent? That's. Uh, that's a gut feeling, mm -hmm. you know, that's not something what you can learn. And talent is sometimes enough. And, uh, you know, when you kick off of an art academy uh, as a student, I always think, well, these are quite interesting artists, you know. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> um, the choice of, the, have we been talking about the choice of artists? Yeah, 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 in a way, yes, yes. As, as we, uh, comme on a débuté de parler des jeunes, je, je continue d'abord sur les jeunes, talents, donc il y a un, un, un travail d'abord de prospection, euh, puis une phase test, si je peux me permettre de l'appeler ainsi, c'est une phase test que moi je mets en place dans les projets, Ron dans son projet avec l'académie, et à partir de là, on consolide une relation euh, mutuelle euh, sur une expérience commune, mm -hmm. c'est-à-dire, est-ce qu'elle était fructueuse, fructueuse ou non Est-ce qu'on pense que la relation a un potentiel, c'est-à-dire le partenaire a un potentiel euh, de croissance, d'intelligence, de behavior pour pouvoir euh, évoluer Ça, c'est très important. Maintenant, ce que Ron a dit, euh, c'est vrai que les académies d'art ne font trop peu d'efforts mm -hmm. euh, pour aider les jeunes artistes à apprendre quelques clés pour entrer dans le milieu professionnel et quand je dis professionnel je parle aussi du marché de l'art cependant je me souviens que des académies françaises font des professional days où ils, inter ils font intervenir des galeristes ou d'autres pour leur donner quelques clés mais c'est trop peu développé et on, on constate effectivement mais ça c'est un autre problème dans la, dans, dans la société c'est que quand on dit que par année il y a 500 étudiants qui sortent des académies euh, d'art on est tous d'accord qu'il euh, n'y a pas de possibilité pour trouver des collectionneurs qui achètent euh, et qui font euh, vivre 500 personnes par an pour les Pays-Bas ou 20 personnes pour le Luxembourg c'est mm -hmm. pas possible Euh, donc euh, il y a évidemment une sélection euh, les jeunes artistes ne sont pas suffisamment préparés à cette sélection il, 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 euh, il y a une, un côté naïf euh, qui est maintenu consciemment je pense par les écoles puisque les, les écoles ils vivent du nombre d'étudiants et si on dit déjà aux étudiants qu'il n'y a que 2 sur 100 qui peut faire une carrière, c'est pas très motivant. Donc ils vont pas quand même se dire, euh, euh, de, ok, ça n'a aucun sens que vous êtes à l'école, vous pouvez rester à la maison puisque vous serez des chômeurs. Donc quelque part, les, 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 euh, les écoles trompent euh, leur public parce qu'ils veulent pas aborder le sujet de la professionnalisation, alors que c'est un vrai vrai sujet 
sur les, les compétences, les compétences artistiques, mais aussi les comp compétences de, de networking, de comportement, de commercial aussi. Je veux dire, on a quand même une petite économie personnelle, c'est-à-dire on ne peut pas dépenser plus qu'on gagne, ou des choses très banales. Je veux dire, on, il y a tellement d'artistes qui voient des projets en grand, s'ils les feraient en petit, ils pourraient les faire très bien. Mmh. Personne ne leur a dit. Tout le monde dit, waouh, c'est grand, je le fais en grand. Mais finalement, ils s'épuisent, manquent de moyens. Donc, euh, il faut trouver aussi des pratiques à son niveau. Et tout ça pour vous dire que euh, quand je commence à travailler avec quelqu'un, je regarde aussi ces aspects-là. Euh, quelqu'un qui, qui n'arrive pas... Euh, après tant d'années à se donner une belle structure d'atelier pour avoir une, une pratique correcte, c'est compliqué. Euh, il fait quelque chose pas, pas super professionnel, pas super cadré, puisque après dix années de peinture, tu devrais pouvoir euh, euh, travailler des formats un peu plus grands ou avoir un petit storage ou machin, machin. Donc, c'est des, des réflexes à avoir pour structu structurer un peu... Euh, euh, son, son, son modèle et je trouve ça très important il est vrai qu'il faudrait aider les, les artistes à, à se, se projeter dans une carrière et comme je comprends bien sûr vos programmes de galeries sont très internationaux mais vous ne vous hésitez pas à regarder aussi dans les régions j'ai compris ça très bien que le local et le international ce n'est pas comme like un conflit pour vous c'est connecté avec l'autre parce que nous sommes ici en uh, Belgique, les Nederlands, le Luxembourg eh, connecté avec uh, le show ici uh, uh, et aussi comme yeah, like vous dites l'organisation des studios yeah, Hans of the Big et Edwin Olaf ils doivent être très very well organized and also in times when there are no incomes there is also a, yeah, a connection with personal lives of, of assistants and people that that are there so everything indeed is connected and it would be interesting indeed to have more openness about that and I feel it also when young uh, artists want to apply for projects sometimes you know uh, it just needs a little bit of help to find out how we, you can make the nice uh, context but coming back to this idea of international and local eh? um, how do you see that in a balance because i hear now voices for example there is a triennial that will do a show only with uh, art pieces that are accessible by Uh, sustainable um, transport, which means that there will be a show uh, without the other artists from other continents. And I hear that more and more that, okay, this idea of sustainability is really important, but then it comes also in this balance between the local and the international. How do you see that in the practice of the gallery, but maybe also connected with the art world? Well, I, I didn't hear uh, uh, that about uh, what you are talking now, uh, but I think, you know, to tell uh, just one story um, concrete what happened with one of my, uh, one of the artists uh, from the graduation show. So Marcus Quay from Borneo, Malaysia, four to six years uh, studied in The Hague, began, began as a graphic designer, Then he worked with textiles and he made this beautiful tapestry. So uh, the Museum Fort Linden, together with me, gave him the prize, the Youngblood Award. And so we sponsored uh, a big tapestry of eight meters, what is now next to the Sung Dong. Sung Dong is his hero in the museum, in the permanent collection in Wassenaar. The Stedelijk Museum bought three works of him and he has three muse museum shows coming up. I'm very proud of these kind of uh, things. But his father in Borneo, in the jungle, he didn't understand him because he said textile, because um, an artist is toch a painter, no? Now that's, that's also possible, but now he get this commission of Mini Cooper to, uh, to uh, transform with textile a Mini Cooper. And then he was so happy because My parents knows what a Mini Cooper because you you have them all also in Borneo, so and that's what's you know that what a gallerist 
also uh, can uh, achieve for for young artists. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. mm -hmm. Oui, le rapport entre le régional et l'international, euh, pour moi, il est principalement structuré par euh, des, des, des concepts. Euh, Elles, vous avez dit, euh, la vision de, 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 de développement durable, évidemment que ça joue de nos jours, mais c'est depuis toujours une question d'argent. En, en d'autres termes, une, une galerie qui, qui, a, qui a une force de frappe pour aller aux États-Unis peut le faire, et d'autres restent régionales. Mm -hmm. Moi, je n'ai jamais eu la force de frappe pour aller aux États-Unis, puisque ce n'est pas une, une seule foire, alors il faut en faire deux, et entre les deux foires, il faut encore faire des vernissages à New York ou, ou, ou je ne sais pas où, sinon ça n'a aucun sens d'aller une fois à une foire. Donc du coup, euh, euh, et évidemment, l'empreinte écologique, ou euh, comme on dit, devient d'autant plus euh, dé démesurée, puisque c'est une course vers l'avant d'être de plus en plus présent, mm -hmm. et il y a effectivement un côté un peu fou, disjoncté dans notre monde, qu'on euh, doit être partout, on doit euh, euh, être sur les, toutes les foires du monde. Alors, le côté régional, lui, il permet, euh, et je pense que pour Ron, pour moi, et mais beaucoup de confrères le voient de la même manière, c'est d'être proche euh, d'une scène locale, des académies, des... Euh, euh, initiatives. De, de, de oui. toutes les sortes d'initiatives mm -hmm. en institutions ou d'autres des collectionneurs et donc du coup euh, euh, on se construit son propre réseau de proximité dans lequel euh, on évolue c'est très important, si on ignore cela euh, on a euh, on n'a pas vraiment de, de réseau euh, local qui, qui te défend qui te soutient sur des achats peut-être euh, moins un porte-monnaie moins, moins élevé mais euh, évidemment il faut en même temps en parallèle développer euh, l'international pour pouvoir résister euh, sur le champ des pays européens quand je vais à Genève ou à Paris ou à, à Cologne voilà, euh, je me bats quand même avec d'autres euh, et souvent jusqu'à l'élite euh, euh, au top c'est à dire ce qui est un peu euh, spécial dans notre, dans notre milieu. Sur le même couloir d'une foire, on a euh, la galerie qui fait un chiffre d'affaires de 100 millions et l'autre qui fait que 1 million. Donc le rapport est 1 fois 100, 1 sur 100. Euh, C'est déjà une, une, une énorme, un énorme écart entre players dans la même division. Mm -hmm. Parce que c'est la même division, on est d'accord, on est Art Cologne, on paye le même euh, frais de stand, on, est, mm -hmm. on a le même public, mais du coup, euh, euh, c'est déjà une énorme tension. Mais, justement, je pense que c'est là euh, l'enjeu de notre travail, c'est-à-dire de pouvoir, euh, par moment, avoir un talent régional qui se positionne, mais très bien là-dedans, qui dans cette zone internationale comme Hans ou Olaf euh, euh, commence à se situer mais d'une manière extrêmement performante mm -hmm. et parce que euh, du coup ils ont, ils ont un public international et je pense que c'est effectivement à travers euh, cet engagement là c'est à dire de, de prendre des, des, des talents euh, euh, locaux qu'on peut se permettre euh, d'affirmer de, 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 que on est acteur de la scène, parce qu'on parlait tout à l'heure de l'accès, mais c'est justement ça qui fait qu'on est acteur de la scène, c'est-à-dire on prend euh, nos... Moi, je prends mes luxembourgeois, il y en a, je ne sais pas, 6 à 8 dans mon programme, ce qui est beaucoup. Euh, et je, euh, évidemment, sur les stands de foire, il y en a un peu moins, mais il y en a quand même. Et ça donne quand même l'occasion euh, pour eux de rencontrer un nouveau public. Et encore là, à Bruxelles, j'ai vendu Mike Bourchait, Mm -hmm. qui était à la Biennale de Venise et, et qui est très connu, qui montre après-demain au mois de la photo, la du de l'Anche. Et j'ai vendu une pièce euh, à un collectionneur belge. Il s'avère que Mike va venir habiter à Bruxelles. Donc pour lui, c'est formidable. Du coup, il, y a, euh, il prend place dans un euh, réseau. Et, et, et je pense que c'est les risques qu'on qu porte et c'est les risques qu'on doit porter pour, pour jouer notre rôle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I also hear that this, these connections with museums, eh, um, with institutions like here, um, that this also makes like the scene, eh, the art scene, uh, locally, but also internationally, um, 
as a galleries, do you act actively go to, to museums or to institutions to check if you can, uh, can maybe sell a, a piece or can have like a good show for your artists? Do you go like on the road for, uh, to institutions? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, we try to be visible uh, everywhere. And, uh, you know, for instance, today going to Luxembourg, tomorrow I'm back in Amsterdam, and last week I was in London for the opening of the, in the Tate Britain of Isaac Julian, a week before we saw each other in Art Brussels, so traveling is again after COVID uh, something special, and I always have a look what's happening in the art scene in uh, in Luxembourg, so tomorrow we have an appointment with a curator of the Mudam, and that's my role as a as a as a kind of, let's say, artist liaison or promoter. You know, I'm always on. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have is not not a job. We have a passion, and there's not from nine to five. That's uh, 24/7, definitely. And it's you make. Art is so happy also with this show uh, upstairs. Mm -hmm. You know, both artists uh, were here and they are so proud. I think Ruth uh, did also really, really a very interesting job. You know, I saw it now for the first time, but uh, I think it's, it's made with uh, not only with a lot of content, but also with your heart. And it is, if you are speaking about the combination of all the works, what you, uh, what you selected, it's really an amazing, uh, amazing uh, job. So, yeah. Applause for Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> and yes? Um, as Ron says, it's a lot about being around. It's, uh, it's so important to, to talk to everyone, to get in a um, particular relationship with every person, curator, head of institution, to know his, to know and to understand his his taste, if I can say the word taste, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, uh, and then, on the other side, you must know what your artists are doing or what shows are they doing, preparing. And then you are the one in between who can bring the things together. For example, uh, my, my French uh, favorite uh, painter, Damien de Roubaix, will have a show in uh, Bibliothèque Nationale in France, so it will finish at the end of uh, I don't know, uh, uh, beginning 2025. 20, uh, and I told to, to another friend where I know he has a similar sensibility. He has a big institution. Do you have something for the program? You say, no, not yet. Ah, yeah, maybe a cooperation uh, uh, with, for him with the show on BNF would be great for me. So, I mean, but you must be there to talk to the people mm -hmm. and, and to create this. These, these moments. Yeah, and but, but what do you do then? For example, I hear more and more from younger generations this concept of uh, silence quitting. I, it, it's something that's happening right now. I see it with very young people that when they are not really interested in anymore this networking, this talking, that they uh, silently uh, evo avoid these moments because sometimes people are a bit like hesitating in this, mostly artists maybe, but also the younger generation, I feel these connections that we may be in, in your generations and our generations that have this idea when I want to know something, I take the phone, I talk, I go to you. Um, do you think that by not being present in this network in this web of uh, relations that uh, artists fall out of the boat even if they are have a wonderful potential what do you do then if you see it happen in front of your eyes if you see oh my god this is wonderful uh, yes they fall out of, of the system yeah of course they do but they they should uh, at least have a gallery then i mean uh, he's okay. he's running around i mean ron and me we are running around to provocate this Potentials in in his place in a in way. In his place, yeah. That's our role. Yeah. Okay. Our role is not even not only selling pieces. I mean, that's one of the one, two, three roles we, we can have. We can all also try to help to produce, to find issues in uh, studios or in concepts or in text or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we are 
mainly there to make these relationships. Mm -hmm. I, I see myself more in relations than in, in sellings. I see. The, yeah. the, the gallery sells, not me. Okay. I mean, there is a house, we have a building, space, a white cube or whatever. We, have, we do a, a good show. You, me, with our, pre, uh, our best artist, and the show is great. And then the press is talking about, the people are talking about, there's an opening. So there is a dynamic which is created by a machine, it's called the gallery. Mm -hmm. Our job is much more like going like a sous-marin to all the places to create the energy. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of energy and uh, time mm -hmm. and, and whatever. And you cannot really quantify it. You can quantify it by saying, ah, he is still there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, uh, and that's the difference. That means that now we are in, in, in the same scene since 25 years. There are a lot of people who are not there anymore, mm -hmm. who, who start as gallerists. I mean, a lot. I would say more than half of them. Mm -hmm. There are some who get bigger, some are on our level. I don't know, three employees, four employees. What you, how big is your? A little bit more. Yeah? Tell me. <laughs> My gray hair. So uh, we work with uh, 10 people. 10 people yeah. you work yeah. with. Great. Yeah. I don't know if it is great, but... <laughs> There's a lot of stress. <laughs> There's a lot of stress. Yeah. But we are, uh, again, we are able to, uh, to visit the international art fairs, you know, but we had to stop uh, with COVID. So mm -hmm. we do eight art fairs a year. And there's a, a lot of uh, work, of course, but also making eight exhibitions a year. The best of graduates, and now, the next step will be a little bit a scoop here because uh, we always a little bit waiting to uh, museums your own country because they want to have it far far away mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm creating with another gallery from Amsterdam a, a very huge uh, space to make my own well museum shows once okay. in the three months big installations and you know Hans of the Beek can can do big installations so, uh, and I have more artists uh, like Isaac with a 10 screen video installation. And so in, in, in spite, uh, you know, waiting for all institutes, maybe we can create our, our own institute. Good uh, idea. Yes, Good I idea. think so. Yeah. And yes, it, it's uh, a bit in the tendency of uh, like all um, art collectors that have um, more and sure. more very interesting sure open door uh, I, that are open to public not always maybe but uh, what do you think like also this uh, show like here today in this museum this has, has a reflection on the collectors that uh, maybe see th this work here for the first time and then relate to the gallery does it have effect on the selling when when there is like a museum show it has always effect, effect you yeah. know maybe not directly concrete you know but uh, for the CV the curriculum is it of course very good there's a catalog it's always nice to have catalogs for an artist you know and also for a gallery and uh, the network is also big and uh, I was invited by my friend here to show Erwin and Hans uh, in an art fair coming up in Luxembourg well, November. that's a good good idea, you know. So mm -hmm. this is now already uh, people know about uh, Hans Optebeek and Erwin Olaf. So it makes sense to make a nice presentation in our booth in Luxembourg. It's uh, one day after Art Cologne, so we have to to see. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the reason I have ten people uh, working for me. Yeah. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, Alex. Yeah. Um. If there is an incident about selling on, uh, with uh, selling artists when 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 they have been shown in institution, of course, uh, I mean, uh, uh, and that's maybe why institutions uh, also choose artists who are not easy to be sold, <laughs> 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 and that makes that the galleries have an, uh, that the, the the scene of the art scene of the galleries and the art scene of the institutions. I really complimentary. Complimentary, uh, yes. yes. Yes, you have a lot of good artists who are not so much present in institutions because they 
occupy a good part of the market. Mm -hmm. And I understand the institutional director who says he doesn't need the show. Mm -hmm. So these shows come very late by Gerd Richter or whatever, they came late. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, when they are 80, there are two, three big shows, but when you see what have been done before, there are periods where they are not so present all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, well, yes, I, see, I, I think that's, that's normal. I mean, uh, the art scene is not only done by, um, the, the art is not only done by commercial products, mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of things who are much more difficult to sell than a painting, I mm -hmm. agree. I mean, uh, I have 80% are paintings because they are uh, much easier to sell than, I don't know what, video work or uh, some pieces where the um, materiality will be uh, gone in three years. I don't know. It's complicated to sell a piece where, where the materiality will be out in, in, in three years. So uh, the, the rules are different and the artists, the art scenes are a little bit uh, uh, going in two directions and especially I think in the last 10 years where there was an overheated market um, but good fairs like let's say Art Basel or whatever they manage they still manage to bring institutional works in the fair mm -hmm. and that's the exceptional quality of those um, fairs mm -hmm. who have uh, enough uh, space enough uh, clients also on institutional level, mm -hmm. because a lot of institutional uh, uh, directors do not go anymore to uh, fairs, because fairs became a little bit similar. I mean, they are quite similar. And then the directors say, why should I go to Art Cologne if I, I'm in, Bra in Brussels, because I see anyway Art Brussels and that's enough. So they are not... Uh, uh, for 20 years ago, it was an appointment. When, when we did list uh, 20 years ago, everyone was at least. Uh, and these days, it's much more complicated to um, uh, meet uh, people, maybe also through the fact that uh, there's such a multiplication of events and, and fairs and, and mm -hmm. uh, that we cannot be everywhere and anyway. Mm -hmm. And then indeed, yeah, uh, projects like you are now giving us a scoop uh, fills this gap in a way, like uh, then you have like these open structures that people are invited, but not really like shown as a gallery. And then you have this uh, moments in between. And also like Edward Steichen, he was like artist, but he was also curator and he was also in MoMA connected. So he was also in these in-between roles, and I think we feel that all t now, today, in the art world, everything changes, but it changes all the time. It's n not different than 10 years ago. There were also changes. But now I think when you feel this um, heartbeat, you could say, then you can follow your own passion in it and your own uh, gut feeling. And I, I wanted also to, th to talk about that because sometimes when we uh, talk about something we like or we, we adore, we cannot find the right words because sometimes we cannot give it a value, not only the commercial value, but also the human values. Do you have an idea or... or uh, can you come closer to words to say when you have this gut feeling uh, of when you like the show, for example, here uh, upstairs, or when you see a piece for the first time? Yeah, you talked about this uh, first moment, uh, the Stendhal syndrome, but do you have like parameters for yourself when you say, ah, I have like a good connection with this or this artist, or is it too difficult to talk about? <laughs> it, it is difficult, it is something something, you know, a special knob somewhere in your body, somewhere in your brains, that in front of a new artist or in front of a new work of an artist, there, then you are going to be flabbergasted and you cannot, you know, my goosebumps, that is for me, the, the let's say the criterion, that it is a good artwork, mm -hmm. but it's very personal. Mm -hmm. And today and yesterday, no, not today, but yesterday, we were installing my new show with Daniel Arsham. Daniel is a, a multimedia, fantastic artist from, from New York. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, he came on the idea to have an astronaut 
from uh, hydro stone and uh, 450 kilos. It was uh, we have to uh, to uh, make our entrance bigger. Yeah. And <laughs> to open the up the doors. On Monday, we, we were there with the shipper, art shippers, six men, and we, we couldn't get the thing on top because it has to be on the sockle. So the next day, they were thinking and thinking, and they came with two big some machines. And now it's, it's, it's finished, and I saw it from out of the window, and I think, wow, you know, that's so special. And mm -hmm. selling is... Uh, that is, you know, it's almost impossible to sell it, but I like to show it, mm -hmm. and that's uh, our maybe. I'm uh, very jealous on Alex with 80% uh, painters because I have 20% painters, and the rest all the installations. And but you know what what kind of uh, lastly with uh, Hans Optebeek in Brussels with the whole, you know, mm -hmm. whole um, uh, exhibition in a way installation in grey and with uh, heavy, heavy stuff and uh, well and uh, maybe I can say that because if we are talking about emotions because Stendhal and Guernica was one but the other one who really inspired me was, uh, was somebody from Belgium because Jan Hood in 86 in the Chambre d'Ami in Gant mm -hmm. so he asked 50 uh, international well-known artists to put an insulation or some artwork in 50 normal houses and during the summer people had their doors open and you could see a Mario Merz in somebody's bedroom mm -hmm. and uh, Dan Graham, uh, it, it was really fantastic and yeah. Jan is really, unfortunately he's not among us anymore but he was really, really a uh, museum director, and person. And a change maker. Eh? And a change, change maker. maker yes. Who is your change maker? <laughs> I, 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 has, I didn't have the chance to be in Belgium in that mom at that moment. Um, but um, the, um, how, how you get sent, uh, comment, comment on, on rentre dans une sorte de communion avec uh, le travail d'un artiste, c'est... Uh, C'est évidemment une, une, une vaste question. Est-ce que c'est plutôt une, une histoire d'émotion ou est-ce que c'est euh, -ce est plutôt une question d'intellect mm -hmm. Pourquoi je parle d'intellect Puisque l'art nous parle de quelque chose. Donc, personnellement, euh, si j'ai plusieurs points d'entrée où j'ai un accès à plusieurs langages dans une même pièce, ça commence à être intéressant. C'est-à-dire, euh, euh, c'est un peu complexe à raconter non, non. maintenant. Euh, c'est que euh, euh, l'histoire d'une pièce est, est nourrie par sa, 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 son aspect physique, euh, euh, son process euh, de création, euh, son auteur, son contenu, l'histoire qu'elle raconte, etc. Euh, sa subjectivité, sa, son subconscient, il y a, y a une... une, une Une, une grande diversité d'accès à, à une œuvre. Et je pense que, euh, d'abord, il faut une concordance sur plusieurs points, c'est-à-dire il faut que moi-même, mon moi, mon, je ne connais pas les termes de la psychanalyse, mais je veux dire, les, les différents aspects euh, visuels, linguistiques, conceptuels, émotionnels, ont différents plans d'accès. Mm -hmm. Et euh, si... Si là, il y a une sorte de, de concordance euh, et que de, euh, je, je tombe d'accord, je, je dirais plutôt que je suis d'accord euh, mm -hmm. avec parce qu'il y a euh, euh, tant d'éléments qui, qui me parlent, qui, et qui, yeah, qui, yeah. ou que je comprends, ou une résonance, je, ou des ouais. résonances. Voilà. Ouais, ouais. C'est plutôt comme ça que je le vois. Ah, ok. Oui, oui c'est intéressant. Oui. Et vous, uh, do you, uh, can you feel it that for example, when there is like a show like here upstairs with Erwin and Hans, can you feel that they are in this way of, of uh, connecting with many people to, that they have, can have connection with a broader public and not only with uh, art lovers? Or do you think it's uh, really a niche uh, concept? The concept, the concept of the show. Yes. Um, I think the concept is quite strong because the the, the hand of the creator is quite visible. Um, je veux dire par là que uh, Hans Optebeck est pour moi un, un, tra un travail qui, qui fonctionne dans son 
propres, dans ses propres installations. En fait, c'est un travail qui se regarde. C'est des scénographies qui, où les éléments interagissent entre eux et le curateur a remplacé cela par d'autres artistes. Donc c'est très osé pour bousculer le travail de, de Hans d'une telle manière. Euh, néanmoins, euh, il y a beaucoup de points communs euh, dans ces travaux et euh, euh, évidemment les choix du curateur orientent la lecture. Elle oriente très fortement la lecture. Mm -hmm. euh, ce qui me euh, perturbe légèrement, euh, <rire> c'est pas grave, hein, Ruth. Euh, ça me perturbe légèrement puisque euh, les associations qui sont créées, euh, je ne sais pas s'ils correspondent à l'intention que l'artiste a forcément voulu établir ou transmettre. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, mais ça se voit souvent que les curateurs jouent ce rôle. C'est courageux, c'est risqué. Euh, <rire> mais je trouve ça bien, puisque le côté expérience, c'est-à-dire vivre l'exposition, devient évident. C'est-à-dire, on a une proposition vécue. Mm -hmm. C'est-à-dire, il y a une sorte d'orientation du regard qui domine la promenade du, du, du visiteur. Des œuvres, oui. Ah, ou du visiteur. Euh, oui. Du visiteur, voilà. Oui, oui. Du visiteur. Mm -hmm. euh, euh, évidemment, euh, ce qui est riche dans cette promenade, c'est qu'il y a une confrontation sur 100, 100 ans, sur une centaine d'années. Euh, on a une utilisation extrêmement primitive de la photographie parce qu'elle est, elle est jeune à ce moment-là, donc elle est très innocente. On voit les inspirations euh, euh, du, port du portrait bourgeois, on, on voit euh, les inspirations de la peinture romantique. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, c'est beaucoup fait à mes yeux, je ne suis pas expert de Steichen, mais c'est beaucoup fait au premier plan, c'était un premier niveau d'analyse, ah, un, un portrait bourgeois est comme ça, un portrait machin, ou une vue euh, romantique est comme ça. Voilà. Chez Hans of the Beck, ou euh, 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 <rire> Olaf, on est sur une, euh, une, une analyse plus complexe, puisque... Euh, euh, ces, ces artistes de cette génération-là, évidemment, ils se demandent le, le pourquoi d'une œuvre euh, et évidemment, c'est autrement structuré euh, mm -hmm. et, et ça amène beaucoup de dialogues quand même dans l'exposition, mais euh, ce dialogue reste un tout petit peu dans cette brume qu'on retrouve dans toutes les, dans toutes les pièces. And you know the artists very well, of course. Uh, you, you, you follow them all the, already a long time. Can you uh, agree with this uh, connection, that, uh, this, this idea? I think Alex uh, explained it very, very well. Yeah. yeah especially, yeah. 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 So I, I don't think I have adding more things more to it. No, uh, no, no. Because with Hans, I work for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And he is a romantic guy. Uh, Erwin Olaf. He is also romantic, but he is also a fighter for the LGBT yeah. community, and you know it's a revolutionaire. Mm -hmm. Hans is more the the quiet guy, mm -hmm. but the combination, you know, that it's really superb. You know, mm -hmm. that's really good. And and Steigen has their this fantastic uh, role in it, in mm -hmm. the middle of it. Oh, yeah. And you probably can also agree that a broader public can relate to it. Of course, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes it's a little bit criticism on both artists, you know, because if I say, may say so that, uh, for instance, that uh, Hans in, in, the, in Belgium, you know, the MUCA has uh, a, a small, um, uh, you know, some museum shows did it, but in Germany, for instance, he had more shows than in Belgium, you know, and with Erwin it's the same, you know, Erwin, uh, his whole oeuvre is... Uh, adopted by the Rijksmuseum with more than 500 works and every work what he's not going to make till his death is added to this collection so that's that's of course so special and after the Kunstmuseum in The Hague where there was this uh, fantastic um, exhibition and oeuvre show 
with more than 365,000 people. That, that, that is amazing. So both artists, you know, uh, they have admirers from high to low art, you know. Sometimes uh, the, um, let's say, the niche people are have some problems with this kind of uh, anchor shows. But uh, I am, you know, I think you are really, really a great artist that you are, you know, uh, let's say that there are so many admirers from young to old in every generation. and. And both artists has that. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. That they, they can relate to different contexts, in fact. Exactly. Yes, yes yeah. indeed. Yeah. Um, maybe there are questions coming from the public. You are thinking about some things you want to share with us. It doesn't have to be a question. It can also be an idea or a thought or a, a complaint or a <laughs> something you want to share. No pressure. We can also do it in private if this talk is this public <laughs> talk is over. I just want to say that it happens that the gallery. I also work with Alex. The gallery is next door, so we have on one side an institution and on one side the gallery. And the best news was this one mm -hmm. <laughs> because it just came down like all the time. Every single opening, you know, every every time he comes to to sh to see the things, yeah. and you know, it happens that he, he likes some of the things, and but then also when you walk in the gallery and you, you people come out of the gallery and you want to say oh good afternoon, then the best news is you have the best show to go to see next door, mm -hmm. and you can really share something else. You know, that's why it's so important. It shows, mm -hmm. you know, exhibitions in institutions are so important because this is what you, you share with people. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, that's a nice, uh, yeah, nice thought. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, I wanted to, uh, um, be, when I made the selection, before the exhibition was built, of course, I, uh, I presented the idea to, uh, both Erwin and, uh, and Hans of combining specific works of art, uh, also because I wanted them to be in, in, in accordance. So they wanted, if they were, would agree that we might make those uh, combinations, and uh, 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 if it, well, was stayed true to their intentions. Uh, so uh, we, um, I did try to make sure that uh, nothing happened to the presentation of the artworks or the, the, the context that was totally contrary to what they, mm -hmm. uh, what they meant uh, uh, communicating with these uh, artworks. And uh, uh, yeah, I think both uh, were surprised uh, to, uh, to see the combinations and it was an, uh, actually a, a common a common journey, so just mm -hmm. to to appease uh, the to to uh, no, it's it's it's. Uh, um, I really think it's important that when you work with uh, living artists, that they are happy with what. Uh, I mean, the work is not successful if they are not happy. Huh? It's about the it's putting the artist in center stage and and allowing the the work of the artist with all the. Uh, intentions, uh, um, uh, uh, allowing that to communicate with uh, with the visitors. That that's mm -hmm. what we try to do, uh, mm -hmm. and that's also what you try to do as as gallerists, as uh, uh, exhibition maker, cute festival makers. It's like um, uh, creating a, a podium uh, for people to to exchange ideas, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to to creating these is, these interesting windows, and and uh, sometimes. Perhaps some people conceive the art market and the institutional worlds as a sort of separated worlds and, and, or worlds that should not be, um, um, uh, that should not be too many uh, f uh, overflows or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I think uh, there's so many people in our, all our professions that uh, all work f with, from a, a certain passion. Huh? All three mm -hmm. of you work, f and, well, and myself too. Um, um, I should not tell this, but uh, I would even do the job when I, I'm not paid. You know, it's it's just it's a passion, 
And it's, it's, That's it's not great. Uh, contemporary, yeah? Sorry? Right now, all the youngsters first want to be paid. And <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, also a change yeah. of generations, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's <laughs> but, which is good, huh? because yeah. uh, it's a fair practice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, so, yeah. and, and uh, what I was curious also is um, uh, your personal experiences with uh, Erwin and, yeah. and Hans. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, very shortly address that too? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, for me, it means uh, I learned to know the work of Hans of the Big during the Triennial of Bruges in 2021 where there was a big um, carousel, it's called, eh? like a big, uh, yeah, merry-go-round, merry voilà. but also in these grayish uh, tones and with the kind of uh, awkwardness, uh, there were like animals in it and people and dead uh, skele skeletons and they were like, did this stop right now? Has there been a tragedy or, or is this something happening? And it was really interesting because Bruges is a really picturesque context, it's like a museum itself, um, but it, re it gets a good re connection with the church where it was nearby with these Baroque elements and stuff, and so it gave a really nice um, connection, and so I learned to know Hans of the Beek more closer, and then uh, for his opera uh, that he was like the uh, scenographer and the costume de designer in uh, Flanders, he asked me to, to write a text, and so I could come uh, closer also in, uh, into his practice. Uh, but then in the Biennial of Lyon, and then in Helsinki, you know, it was like uh, last year was uh, overall uh, Hans of the Beek, which was uh, amazing. I really uh, enjoyed uh, this immersive installation, like you mentioned, the, the whole world of Hans of the Beek, um, that inspires me a lot. With Erwin Olaf, I've never worked before. Uh, I know his work, and uh, also with uh, Edward Steichen also. Uh, I, I thought he was an American, but I'm very happy now that I know he's uh, your unique selling proposition, uh, helping Luxembourg on the map. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to see the show right now too. Mm -hmm. Well, I think with, uh, to start with uh, Steichen, it was for me also a discovery, to be honest, and I think, we said it before, but Ruth, you really uh, made a, a fantastic combination with the three of them because there are so many um, relations between them and if I see it upstairs, you know, both artists has, or the, all the three artists has, uh, has the connections with each other and you know, with, with Hans I worked for over 20 years, it's in the art world quite, uh, quite uh, uh, a time <coughs> because when I w started working with him he didn't have a gallery he had uh, worked with Dorothee de Pau but she stopped her gallery and he won the Belgian painting prize yeah. with an installation <laughs> with yeah. a large installation so I was for one year the only gallerist and later on Xavier Hufkens came and all the, all the other international uh, artists but since then uh, we are both we are very loyal to each other Erwin, I only dance with Erwin on gay, uh, gay parties and uh, because he is a, a fighter for, for, the, for the rights of, of gay people and he is also in, in Amsterdam you have a festival called Milkshake and he, he was there Thanks. with a fantastic uh, group of dancers and music and DJs and so then he became 60 and he wanted to uh, retire because he has a very very bad health he has a long problem and um, I always uh, complained to Erwin that he did not work with me but he was for 30 years he worked with uh, Flattened Gallery and you know there was not a reason to, uh, to step uh, to me and then after his retirement he got an offer from uh, the Kunsthalle München to have their show and their, this, this beautiful involved came, came to it and he said, Ron, okay, for you, I, uh, I, I, I have 10 years extra. So the coming 10 years, we are uh, playing with each other and uh, let's say make the best possible um, shows. Next year, he's 65 and then a big party. So come to Amsterdam. <laughs> it will be not alone, on, only art, but also dance and music. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> I think I did uh, my uh, commentar of the show, which is yeah, a great yeah. show. 
um, uh, stations uh, photographs are so uh, rich that yeah. you can uh, uh, continue uh, making uh, these uh, relations between contemporary art and what mm -hmm. Station did uh, during his uh, life and it's an important uh, yeah, uh, really. position especially mm -hmm. in Luxembourg to bring uh, mm -hmm. people to uh, to the museums, to art, uh, and to make uh, the scene getting uh, uh, larger, more demo democratic, and uh, the effort um, Musée National d'Histoire de l'Art is doing since some years, also with the Museum Magazine and all these things, is a huge effort. And I think uh, more and more people are, are uh, believing in the quality of, of this museum. I mean, I, I, I know this museum 20 years <laughs> before, yeah. uh, where uh, it, was another, it was another story before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Yeah. Uh, someone has also uh, something to, j to share. That's great. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Oksana. I am an art advisor. Uh, and I was delighted to work several times for Art Week organized by Alex Redding. Uh, so thank you very much for this wonderful uh, evening and this talk, it was uh, very insightful. And also I would like to uh, share my observations uh, because I'm originally from Kyiv, Ukraine and I have been living to Luxembourg during the last eight years. And uh, to be honest, uh, during the last several years, the art scene in Luxembourg became more team-oriented and more partnership-oriented. Uh, because it's incredible, like it's not institution to institution, but we see here two galleries and institutions which are working together on one single project and to the benefit of everyone and educate the public, of course. Uh, at the beginning, when I arrived to Luxembourg, it was uh, even I uh, had the comment that, ah, you came to the opening to the vernissage at one gallery, you should not appear at another gallery because they are competitors. And this is, I mean, this kind of events like uh, this, it's really changing uh, the spirit. And not only the spirit, it changing the approach, the mindset of publicum and of the stakeholders of the arts in Luxembourg. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And tomorrow is also an opening of a show here in Casino, I, th I heard, and tonight also. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and, and the Luxembourg Art Week, well, I was, I was going fair, to say that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alex has played a, a pivotal role in the, in the, the whole developments too, and, uh, and there are also some Luxembourg collectors of, of Hans op de Beek, uh, Evan mm -hmm. Olaf. So the whole nice. scene is, is uh, yeah, I think uh, the world is is evolving, huh? and uh, and it's nice to work uh, together and to get much much more professional people and such cool initiatives uh, mm -hmm. in Luxembourg and well uh, I think we we continue our conversations in private we uh, we have uh, filled uh, a th a thank you for this uh, uh, the um, the past hour with lots of interesting observations uh, thank you for your uh, contribution thank you for coming to the museum and for helping to make this uh, such a nice conclusion to the program of activities of the uh, of the ongoing show uh, which is still open until the 11th of June and the artist view until 6 of uh, until the 4th of June uh, the catalog is upstairs in the uh, at the museum uh, shop if you do not uh, already have it uh, I can warmly recommend it <laughs> and uh, yeah let's uh, continue on this vein and and in a few years time uh, maybe net, not next year but the year after there will be another inspired by Steichen exhibition uh, and uh, hopefully in the next few months or so we can uh, announce uh, who will be the next artist or which artist will be the next uh, ones presented in the museum inspired by Stein. I think we can give you a lot of inspiration too. <laughs> yeah, you surely can, okay. Well, thank you again, Els, yeah. Rom, Alex, you and you all. Thanks. And have a nice evening.